Every year, one million New Zealanders dial 111 seeking urgent assistance from emergency services. Every minute of every day, police, fire and ambulance are on call ready to respond. Tonight, police are attacked by drunken rioters as downtown Auckland erupts into a war zone. Ambulance fight to revive a dying rugby fan as a life and death drama kicks off at Eden Park. His heart stopped. We're doing everything that we can to try and get it restarted. And the fire crew cleans up carnage on the motorway. That's one night in Auckland responding to 111. Many emergency calls to police are from concerned citizens with a conscience who know they have to do the right thing. One such call is coming in from South Auckland. Police, what's your emergency? Uh, my girlfriend says we're having a party and she's gone drink driving. Oh, yeah. She's got two children with her, a three-month-old and an eight-year-old. Oh, she actually arrived drunk. Um, she was supposed to stay here for the night and then she took off with the two kids. She said, I don't like waiting on my friends, but I'm, I'm oh, no, going to fight about the kids. Okay, there's a car on the way. Constables Julian and Sarah are dispatched to hunt for the drink-driving mum. The 111 caller is still on the line and has received new information about her friend's whereabouts. Well, we've just found out that she's just pulled into tactics bar. Is she in the bar drinking? Yes. And where are the kids? In the car. And she's very drunk. Police dispatcher Dawn relays this information to Julian and Sarah. The vehicle has been located She's been seen going and taking the bar and just having a few drinks. She's left her kids in the car as well. So we've just got to go and check up on the kids and uh, see what's going on. It seems the woman has been warned the police are on their way. And when Julian and Sarah arrive, they find the children in the bar with her. My kids have been here with me. I hopped out. They came in here with me. And I have been here with me. And I have done nothing wrong. Yeah, OK, I'm, I'm listening okay. to you. I need to you're going to arrest me when I've done nothing wrong. I didn't say I was going to arrest you. OK, I'm well, just I've been saying... arrested every other time by you guys and I've done nothing wrong. I've been shit on by my ex-partner okay. in the past. I'm just here to talk to you. I'm not here to arrest you, OK? okay. I'm just finding out what's been going on, all right? Yeah, well, I haven't done anything wrong. To find out if the mother is telling the truth, Julian needs to determine how much she's had to drink. As I just explained to you before, we're going to just take your details, OK? Put you on the breath tester, see what you blow. But proving she drove while drunk could be more difficult. Her defence could be that she had something to drink at the bar, so then the EBA process could be um, null and void. We can just test her. If she comes up to fail, we can take the keys off her for 12 hours. Basically, forbid her to drive. Go, 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 it's big game night at Eden Park with the Chiefs taking on Auckland's Blues. But one poor fan hasn't even made it through the front gates. Emergency medical dispatcher Olive sends an ambulance to his aid. Party one, please. Walters Road, Mount Eden on a 31 Delta 3. Nocom City 1, do you copy? Copy. Just confirm CPR now in progress. For the St John ambulance crew, Will and Andy, this is as serious as it gets. Time is crucial, but the traffic is heavy. Oh, there's a Chiefs game on. Yep. By the time they arrive, the St John events team at Eden Park has been trying to resuscitate the man for six minutes. How are you doing? Uh, probably all right. Too many uh, the team uses a defibrillator and a desperate bid to shock the patient's heart into restarting. Yeah. Cool. Ready? Cool. Carry on. A worried friend called 111 to report this mother for drink driving. But she insists she's done nothing wrong. Julian and Sarah are about to find out the truth. OK, let's come up foul general. So that means when you drove your kids here, you were drunk. The machine doesn't lie. I know, okay? the machine doesn't lie. So what I'm telling you is when you left that party, you were intox too intoxicated to drive. You're driving a car while you're pissed with your kids in the car. Despite the mother's irresponsible behaviour, police can't charge her with drunk driving because they didn't catch her in the act. Sarah attempts to find out if she is violating any court orders. So you're on probation at the moment? Yes. OK. And what is the, um, the rules around that? Um, I'm doing an anger management course and yep. I'm doing kids. When the grandparents arrive to collect the kids, the woman continues to protest her innocence. 
It, you can't drive. Legally, you cannot drive. Legally, when you lift that powder, you cannot drive, OK? I can't do anything in my life anymore. No, I'm just saying, legally, you cannot drive. So when I leave here, I'm also just going to top myself, OK? Because that's not my life. Threatening to commit suicide upsets her kids and takes this incident to another level. As the crowds pour into Eden Park, it's touch and go for the collapsed rugby fan whose heart has stopped beating. Uh, 30 seconds to the next rhythm check. Yeah. Have, we, have we got my adrenaline ready as well? 20 yep. seconds. Right Charged. It's shocking. Shocking. How long was he down? Did they say? Know, they, um, the St John team is determined to try everything to ensure their patient pulls through. The gentleman's had a cardiac arrest. His heart stopped. We're doing everything that we can to try and get it restarted. Um, we've got a lot of hands here. We've given him some adrenaline already, which should help with the heart. Um, we're drawing up some more drugs. And every two minutes, we're stopping to check his uh, rhythm and see if there's anything more we can do. Quickly restarting his heart is vital to prevent permanent brain damage. Patrolling downtown Auckland are constables Graham and Andrew, Matt and Nell. Suddenly a call comes over the radio that every police officer dreads. One of their own is in danger. A lone sergeant is chasing an escaping offender and needs urgent backup. Roger that. Uh, confirmed telecom building on Harrison. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the road. Harrison. Get it, Colin. Roger that. Let's go. I okay, used to say someone to camp from him near the telecom building on Pope Town. Which one? Best way, mate. The situation has just got a lot more serious. The patrols arrived to find Acting Sergeant Dan single-handedly arresting the offender for breaching his bail conditions. Fortunately, Dan is not injured. Where possible, police try to patrol in pairs to minimise the risk of being assaulted. We had three or four cars there within a minute. Um, the guy, the offender, was arrested. He was transported back to, uh, to base and uh, basically everyone continues on with their night. So uh, it's nice to work in the city and uh, we do feel for some of those cops that work in the rural stations that don't have that sort of uh, that luxury. It's almost kick-off at Eden Park, but outside a far more serious event is unfolding. The cardiac arrest patient's heart is not responding and time is running out. OK, yep, let's have some ears. Got any reading? Nothing. You will. Yes, 58. Miraculously, his heart suddenly starts. The St John team finally feel confident to move their patient into the ambulance, but his pulse keeps coming and going. I can't hear a blood pressure. The prognosis is not looking good. The children of a suspected drunk driver are now safe with their grandparents, but Julian and Sarah can't risk leaving their mother. You said to us twice now that you might as well go top yourself, OK? We just want to take you back with us. We just want to have a bit of a chat to you, all right? Where yes. are we going to? We're going back to the Manukau station. All right, and you'll just be seen by a doctor there. Give you oh, different yeah, alternatives and things up like that. I've got no money, nothing. So what happens then? I'll be, I'll be walking, okay? And I'll be walking down the street, and I hope. Yep. What? What if someone bloody grabs me and rapes me? Okay, Are you guys sure. going to care about that? No. We don't care about that. Of course we do. No. Okay, so we'll just go back to our car, okay? Yeah, we'll just finish my drink and then we'll go. No, no, we won't be finishing drinks. Another drink is the last thing she needs. The cardiac patient's heartbeat is back, and they can now start the journey to hospital. That's pretty decent blood yeah. pressure. Yeah, well, he's got bloody bounding radials. So um, we need to get going now to get moving. Again, he's regained spontaneous circulation, <laughs> and he's got a too. good blood pressure, uh, which is um, oh, a good sign. Uh, so we're going to take him through the hospital. That's a nice general ride. How far out are we? From here, we're probably only about 10 minutes, aren't yeah, we? I'm like 57. Auckland DD, this is City One, how do you copy? Paramedic Will alerts the emergency department to prepare for their arrival. Coming to you with a 57-year-old male, uh, chief complaint being uh, cardiac arrest. He's had five uh, shocks. He's intubated and ventilated. The patient owes his life to the skills of the St John Ambulance Team. 
So we got there nice and quick, which was good. And it was really good that there was effective bystander CPR being done and our event staff were um, close at hand. So those are all positive things which can lead to a, a more, better chance of a good outcome um, with any cardiac arrest situation. This is the police, where's your emergency? Good evening. Good evening, Dorothy, to be there. Hello, Dorothy, how are you? I'm not too good. What's wrong, that Dorothy? woman's still trespassing on my property. Who's trespassing on your property? The, the neighbour that assaulted me. She called me a silly old cat. <laughs> oh. OK, Dorothy, I'll tell you what we're doing. The police will come to your property, so somebody will knock on your door shortly. A check of the police computer reveals that Dorothy has called 111 before. Yeah, Dispatcher like Aroha updates constables down Brad down and Seamus. Informant is Dorothy reports her neighbour is wandering around on her property. Sounds like it's an ongoing neighbourly dispute, so um, we'll pop along and see if we can sort it out. She's 82. She was assaulted by this other female, whose name is Wilma, and she's also 82, uh, about two weeks ago. Wilma is currently wandering around outside the address in her dressing gown. <laughs> Comments below, just letting you know we got the taser on board. Right, <laughs> I I don't think for some reason you're going to need it. At the Fire Communications Centre, Donna Marie dispatches Senior Station Officer Terry and his Papa Toy Toy crew to a Priority One emergency. Motor vehicle accident, Section 40 southbound. Both trucks from Papatoe have been called to a two-car motor vehicle accident uh, southbound on the southern motorway. Under normal conditions, we would have a fire engine coming from the opposite direction, but um, I've been advised that both Manurewa and Papakura are already committed to another call. The fire crews are the first emergency services to arrive at the scene. They discover a driver who has just crawled from the wreckage of a car. Do you know what's happened? Yep, I was um, just coming down the um, right-hand side lane and... So in the fast lane? Yep. OK. And these guys were just coming right up behind me. And so you just so, saw the headlights coming? Yeah, I saw the headlights head. coming out of nowhere and right. I just indicated to get out of their way. Yep. Um, and as I did that, they swerved... Um, to the left as well? Yep, to the left as well and clipped me on the way past right. and then... I just spun out. Just spun out, so you've done a complete 360 yep. by the look of it. Yep. They came up to see if you're okay? Yeah. Right, yep. and then they went back down there, did they? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's very, very lucky under the circumstances that I you're know. not injured. I know. You've taken the tree out and everything. Well, yeah. So look under the front oh of your gosh. car here. Go ahead. We do require police surgery, over. Police are on route over. The road bears witness to the high speeds, and the other car is also badly damaged. Its driver will have some explaining to do when police arrive. And the two witnesses said they were doing at least 140, at least. The witnesses' accounts could lead to the young driver being charged with dangerous driving. Brad and Seamus are in Three Kings at the unit of an old lady who called 111 to report her neighbour for trespassing. Whereabouts on your property did she come? Uh, well, tonight I went out there to get the mail. Right. And she was out there. And I said, you're trespassing on my property. She said, you silly old tart. It's probably taking things a little bit far to arrest an 82-year-old lady. She's but... not 82. I'm 82. Well, how old would she be? She'd be at least 75. OK. The trespass here, though, the problem is it's a footpath and you're in a bit of a... Uh, common ground where you're sharing it with other units, okay? You can't section off part of a footpath and say you can't step on that bit because it's mine, because it's all shared between is all the, the units. Law, is it? Yep, yeah, that's, that's the law. Right. Yeah. I go on near the edge of the yeah. well, road. We will have a word to her about that and see if she can do the same, just because yeah, that'll make well, you happy. Be very yeah, yeah. good of you yeah, if I'm, you I'm, could. Hello, is it Wilma, is it? Yes. Hi, that's just the police here. We're just uh, coming in to chat to you about uh, Dorothy's giving us a call. Oh, not again. Yeah, I mean... Yes, yet again, the ongoing neighbourly spat has landed the 75-year-old in hot water. More serious trouble is brewing among Auckland's downtown drinkers. Police foot patrols call comms requesting backup 
So Bridget dispatches city patrol cars. Fighting outside the lounge bar on High Street. Come at you, Tintu. Constables Matt and Nell respond to the call for backup. Yeah, I'm Tintu out of High Street. It's all dispersing. Normal losers. Roger. Matt and Nell pull over to wait for another job. Seconds later, Constables Scott and Winnie, who are on foot patrol downtown, call for urgent backup. The fights have broken out again. Yeah, any units able to catch where she is and what's happening? Matt and Nell arrive to find the city under siege. Angry drinkers are attacking police with makeshift weapons. AKS 2-2. AKS 2-2, go. You need as many officers as you can. We've been struck several times. We need officers here now. Roger. All available units to High Street. Officers being bottled and bottled thrown. Graham and Andrew race to provide backup as downtown Auckland turns into a war zone. As the riot escalates, the street cameras ensure police are one step ahead. Yes, they're actually behind Freiburg Square. All around the back there, up at that side street, over. Graham and Andrew close in on some of the main troublemakers. And that should have been the end of it, but not tonight. <laughs> Not even pepper spray can subdue this guy. Just clearing the road, okay? Everyone needs to go. Simple. Back at comms. Dispatcher Bridget and section manager Anne call in the police helicopter Eagle. Doesn't look like there's fights breaking out or anything uh, major at the moment, but there's plenty of people around. Roger. Tom City is through. Go ahead. Yeah, it seems they've all calmed down now. We've got large numbers in the uh, High Street area. Copy. Well, it is calmer until the guy behind makes his presence felt. Tempers are flaring back at the brawl too. For the second time tonight, acting Sergeant Dan is under attack. We've set a stab into the lounge bar, which has spread out. Several officers have been punched. We've got two lines, one keeping Bryberg Square, the other one covering Courthouse Lane. If there are any three officers, that'll be great. Roger, we should still have some units heading towards you. Downtown cameras, did you copy? Coordinating more than 20 patrol cars is a massive job for dispatcher Bridget. Keeping officers updated with information from downtown cameras and Eagle. Yeah, there's a few antagonists up uh, Chantry that have uh, had a go at uh, my officers. Finally, the police have the riot under control. AKS 22, any ambulance required? Uh, I think staff are all right. Uh, I don't think any of the offenders need any. Giving up accounting to become a cop means pepper spray is now a hazard of the job for Constable Graham. He'll be feeling that spray, yeah. I've got a bit of it in my face as well. Unfortunately, you get a bit of contamination in the when it's uh, close quarters like that, but he's a big guy, and without spray, it's, it's, it's treated. Acting Sergeant Dan is still not sure what started the riot. There's a couple of bars along here. Um, a couple of the guys over there I've already spoken to tonight, and they're just up, a lot of bravado, a lot of egos. And they're just obviously looking for a fight tonight. Go ahead. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a bit of a knock there, but it's fine. Constable Winnie, who first called for help, is still in the thick of the action, and comms are anxious to ensure she is safe. Uh, all right, comms. Uh, I'm actually all right. Uh, I'm with a unit uh, corner of uh, Cotton House and Heights. Yeah. Roger, and you've got other units with you? Yep, that's it. Roger. There's nothing wrong. Comms AKS. AKS. Uh, excellent performance by all staff. Uh, all the troublemakers seem to be in custody uh, and the rest of the groups are starting to disperse. Graham and Andrew are heading back to base, still suffering the after effects of pepper spray. 
Damn, yeah, that burns. Oh, that burns worse than that shit all day. Don't put this on camera. <laughs> The rioter who head-butted police was charged with two counts of assaulting police and fined $630, while the man who kicked police was sentenced to 100 hours community service. The 17-year-old driver who caused the motorway crash was convicted of dangerous driving, disqualified for six months, and sentenced to 40 hours community work. And Dorothy, still not speaking to Wilma. Next on 111, a drunk driver pulls the poor me routine. Poor, the poor country. For the poor country. A suicidal woman has rushed to hospital. She's potentially life-threatening. And a hungry shoplifter is caught in the act. If everybody ate $12 worth of sweets, that would be a lot of money gone. 